This is the Dale Not Dale Podcast Season 3. New ad read from Good Ranchers. <laughs> American Meat Delivered. That's right. Hey, you know what, Vaughn? What? The real March Madness is... In trying March. To, trying to, oh, no, it is. But trying to find quality, affordable American meat at a grocery store these days. That's why I get all my meat delivered from Good Ranchers. They are the number one meat delivery in the U.S., bringing 100% American beef, chicken, pork, and wild-caught wild seafood to your door. Let's be honest. When you go to the store, you end up parking a mile away. You get your cart with only with only one non-squeaky wheel, and then you settle for low-quality, overpriced cuts that are in those gross styrofoam packages. Ugh. Stop the meat madness with March Meatness at GoodRanchers.com. Right now, during their March Meatness event, Good Ranchers is offering free jumbo chicken wings for a year with any subscription. That's incredible. Makes delicious dinners, game time favors, and grill out staples with the two pounds of free wings you'll get in each box when you subscribe. Claim $150 value of free wings plus an additional $20 off with my code DDPod at GoodRanchers.com today. They take the ick out of chicken. How? Every piece comes with an NAE program that guarantees it's never given antibiotics or added hormones at any point. I say nay. <laughs> that's what I really love about Good Ranchers, their commitment to transparency. They believe that you have the right to know exactly what's in your food. They're amazing supporters of this show, so go support them and take the mystery out of all the meat you buy. Go to GoodRanchers.com and use my code DNDPOD to get your free wings for a year. $20 off and free shipping today. GoodRanchers.com. Use my code DNDPOD to enjoy March meatness savings. Good Ranchers. American meat delivered. Yeah. On the podcast, we chillin' zest. Uncle Dale Vaughn Magnus, yeah, we the best. Magnus in the cut, no shirt in sight. Spitting truth and jokes, yeah, we keep it tight. Uncle Dale's wisdom, dropping like jams with Vaughn's quick wit. I'm ready. Vaughn is slacking. All right. What's up, Vaughn? Yo. We got some special guests in the house. We have Marshland Ranch. Composing of Mr. Julian, Mr. Evan, and Trey from the Fay. What up? Hey, boys, doing? Doing good. Quite well. Jet. J E T. A little tired. Jet. Did y'all party last night? Mm mm. Uh, well, Julian did. Did we? Yeah, we kind of did, but we didn't party hard night before. We had a long week. Well, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> I had to get put to bed. We had a long I tucked him in. <laughs> okay, all right. That's good. <laughs> you did. I tucked him in and took his shoes off, you know. Yep. Oh. He got home. Good, from good the friends. yeah yeah we was in Seastat College Station and we went to Good Bull and some some bull chicanery occurred. Is that where y'all played? Where'd y'all play at in College Station? We played for a uh, company party out there, the Brown College Station Apartment Association. Shout okay. Out. Uh, yeah. Brian College Station Apartment Association. Yeah, mm-hmm. it rhymes. You know that's like all I do, right? There's apartment <laughs> really? association. So it's probably really? like what you do, except there. Yeah, know? exactly. And um, yeah, man, I like it because it rhymed as a musician. So it's like, yeah, we're gonna go do a gig for them. They just hit you up. Uh, yeah, we we uh, I know a lady who works there through mutual friends and stuff. Oh, nice. But uh, yeah, dude, they they hired us and uh. We played for their employees, and it was awesome. They had a little award show. Hell yeah. And we were the entertainment. Nice. How long did you play for? We played for an hour right before the... Awards. Awards. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a good gap between that, and then we played for one more hour afterward. Dang. Yeah, yeah, I was getting a little bit angsty. I was like, I won't play. <laughs> just won't play. Just keep playing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's too long a break. Yeah, I can imagine. So, Trey, this is actually your third time on the show, man. Yeah, yeah I think this is the most I've ever had somebody on the Dale Not Dale podcast. That wasn't family, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're second by Kiki You're now. You're second, yeah. <laughs> that's it, we big have, dog. We have one that's four. That's hit four. Me and Kiki. Yeah, dude. Tied up. So, yeah, you had uh, by yourself, and then we had Adrian Yanez, and now we got you and the boys, man. Okay, Adrian just booked a fight. He did? I don't know against two, but he said May 18th. Let's go. Yeah, so I don't know who yet, though. That's good, man. So, uh, yeah, so I know we talked about this. I was like, man, we need to get you guys on since you got your band. You guys are sure playing. 
And uh, I know you brought some guitars for later too, which would be fun. Mm-hmm. Get a little little jam session. Here's some here's some music. But uh, so so tell me how you came up with the name Marshall and Ranch. What where did that come from? Let Evan do that one. Uh, the way I tell people is that um, you know, we live on the coast, and we're surrounded by marsh. And it's you like ranch? And, yeah. Well, I kind of see it as the fish <laughs> and all the oil. It's weird. Like the man, how did I say that? I was imagining crawfish with cowboy hats. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, we're the cattle in all this marsh. So we're a marshland ranch. Okay. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like that a lot. That's a lot of words on a t-shirt, but it's cool. It's, yeah. We're trying to get, it's, like, <laughs> it's southern rock. It's, it's not country. And so he's put like ranch kind of conveys the south. That's where ranches are. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not in a cattle ranch area. We're on the marsh. We're in Galveston. Mm-hmm. You're in marshland. Swampy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of marshland where we are. Yeah. I do like the name. I do too. Cool logo, Thank like a, like actual like a ranch logo. Came up with a logo, dude. Let me tell the story about the process of picking a name for a band. Let's hear it. So <laughs> you had another name before. Yeah. Okay. I want to give a uh, I want to give an explanation. You know, there's two there's two journeys you can go on. You know, this is industry. You can go on as a band or as an independent artist, and uh, I feel like somewhere down the road, Trey from the Faye would have worked out, but. These guys right here put in too much effort and money into what we do for me to be like, I'm Trey from the Fay and they work for me. Yeah. It's like, this is more of a, we do this, we do this shit together, man. And uh, so we had to pick a name. I was like, what are we going to, we have to be a band, you know? And I'm inspired by people like Whiskey Myers and Blackberry Smoke who yeah. sing the exact same type of shit that we like it's to st- sing. Yeah. And uh, I was like, Train wrecks is cool, dude. I'm from Santa Fe, and it's a big like trains are really cool in Santa Fe. It's a big yeah. deal. The real road runs through there. I thought I was a genius, Neil. Yeah, we had a whole thing because I, I was like, we're going. You're imagining t-shirts, socials, and everything. <laughs> we're yeah. going to spell it different. I was like, my name is Trey. What do we freaking incorporate Trey into the word train? Yeah, and like take the C away from Rex and just do the K. T R E Y N W R E K S train wrecks, and then and but then. somebody else. <laughs> somebody else was way smarter than you. Got it first. <laughs> Trademarked, <laughs> copyrighted, <laughs> everything. Oh yeah. All right, spell it again. T R E Y. That's N. how you spell okay. my name. Yeah. N W R E K S train wrecks. Okay, I got it. Big and they, old block woody letters. And they were the same way. Yeah. Exactly. Identical. <laughs> from Texas. Identical. They actually from played Texas. in Santa Fe. No yeah. way. Yeah. You're like, I know I've heard this name before somewhere. No, nah, dude. I never heard it before, <laughs> which is crazy. It. Somebody uh somebody commented on our post and was like, cool name. But when I looked it up, there was two that popped up, and I was like, I can't believe we never looked on Instagram. I thought it who would think of that, dude? Train spelt T R E Y. Some other dude named Trey. Some, Some other dude Trey, named Trey, yeah. Trey man. Train that lives in Santa Fe. <laughs> Some other dude named Trey. Dude. Yeah. His dad works for KCS Railroads. Gosh dang <laughs> Trey. <laughs> well, after that, we explored a, a plethora of different name ideas. Well, what were and, some ones that didn't make the cut? Well, uh, my dad suggested Lip Sweat. I like it. Yeah. I thought that was a good one. <laughs> Shitty Beatles. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> the like crystal the shit. Feet. Yeah. The, so, d- the dung beetles. But after that, every single name we came up with, Grace from the Fay, and all of us would all get on Instagram, Facebook, Texas CAD, like everything else, like just who was copyrighted of this. The only thing we found that was not was one that we all liked, which was Marshall Ranch. That's where we are now. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, you know, things happen for a reason, man. Right. You found that name. That name found you. Amen. That's what we're gonna Jesus say. Uh, God. That's a better. That's a better. I like that ranch. I like Marshland Ranch anyway. I do too. That with the logo, like it really is. It's a good. It's a great logo. It's a great. Yeah. Brand. Great. Yeah. You, <laughs> which one of you boys are gonna get branded? Yeah, you're gonna get All tattoos. They want to get tattoos. <laughs> I'm not getting one, so I told them they can get one of my face as a tramp stamp on both of them. But I'm not gonna do it. Tell us about your tattoo. I got, see, I got, I got his, I got his face on my, on my. Oh my gosh! Oh, yeah, wow. like that. Yo, do that right there. Yeah. Well, Did I see an Elvis tattoo? Uh, that's really? full, that's huh? full. Did I see an Elvis tattoo? Yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. Take care of business, <laughs> yeah. baby. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's why I got it. 
Heck yeah, dude. People are like, what is TCB? I'm like, TCB wild. I forgot to put the wild there. I mm. love country best yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> my favorite. <laughs> is, that, is that even still around? I don't know. I don't it's it's an I've, homage. I don't think I've seen TCB wild in a long time. So you, are getting tatt- you don't have any tattoos? No. Do you have mm-hmm. tattoos, Evan? Mm-hmm. Are you going to no. get one? I don't know. I might. Let's see how the band does. You know? See how the band <laughs> does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is it is it needed? Is a tattoo yes. needed? Yes. I don't think so. <laughs> You'd say that because you're not getting one. Why right. don't y'all? Why don't y'all get like a cattle brand instead? That's what I'm saying. That's coming. The MR. Yeah. yeah. Like Yellowstone. Yeah. You yeah. gotta get branded. Yeah. And then y'all can go to the train station if yeah. one of y'all screws up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll call the train wrecks. Yeah. Yeah. You call the train yeah. wrecks. This is Galaxy <laughs> Bay <laughs> and a cinder block. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, you need to do like your merch with like a freaking leather patch. Yeah, man. That'd be cool. Turn your head around, Lee. Turn oh, you got that on there? Turn your head around. Come on, Lee. dude. Is that train Rex hat? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. I can't wear it for Oh, there you, there you go. go. Can y'all read it? Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. It's not too small. The print. This, is, this is Gen 1. Yeah. It's Gen All right. 1. So shout out to Tyler Blankenship who made these hats. Um, I think he was a fan of mine, and he uh, we had some mutual friends, and uh, he obviously just has the equipment to make hats like this. And he uh, he made some gear for us just to see what we think about it. Yeah, and we like it, dude. We do like it. We do like it. Some some. If, if I had one critique, I'd make the brand bigger. bolder. Everything oh, yeah. just yeah. needs yeah. to be bolder. That and the, the the wording's fine. Yeah. I, I don't think the wording. I think the brand needs to be to look a little, a look a little like not perfect like a brand would be. Yeah, a little more. Yeah. And these work, but we do. Appreciate but no, it's the man I do. who put in the work to do it. No, we it's also nice. Made koozies as well. Koozies are awesome looking. Oh, koozies yeah. are real cool looking. Yeah. Should write some. Yeah, that's a cool name though. I really do do enjoy it. I guess I have to wear the hat like yes. So what's the pod. so what's lip sweat? What where'd you decking with that from? <laughs> <laughs> He's a sweaty dude. He's kind of just making fun. <laughs> my dad's been very supportive he um i started playing guitar when i was about 10 my uncle brought me a guitar and you maybe stick with it if you're not gonna do studying if you're not gonna go do sports go practice yeah go practice guitar and i've been in a bunch of different bands but yeah he, he really picked up behind this one because evan and i we've been playing together for a little while evan started living with me actually yeah, but well, he tucked you in. We know. We All right. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, Trey, you decided, like, hey, dude, what what made you decide from being, like, I know you were just kind of playing gigs, doing your own thing for a while. When did you decide to, like, okay, I need to start me a band? And then how'd you do that? I always wanted uh, the band, you know. Um, but, like, I always tell these guys, like, I wish I would have found y'all, like, right after my audition there, dude. Yeah. Cause like we probably would have took off, but, uh, I was just hard finding one, you know, I was kind of picky too. Uh, I mean, I got offers from old dudes who, who've been playing guitar forever and stuff. And they're like, yeah, dude, just let me play with you. It's like, nah, man, I want, I want like the boys too. I'm not, just, yeah. you know what, you mm. know what I mean? That's studio guys. You don't, you, yeah, you want some guys like, you're going to go hang exactly. out with and party with. Yeah. Go on the deal on the deal podcast. And, uh, Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't know 50 year olds in here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 40. We don't need 50 year olds. <laughs> yeah, dude. But uh, excluding our, our bass player, shout out Mike. Shout uh, out Mike. Mike is a genius. Mm-hmm. We're so thankful for Mike, dude. But uh, yeah, dude, it's just, it, it happened last minute where I had booked a gig and I promised this venue that I was going to bring a band. And it's like two weeks away, and I'm like, shit, I haven't even booked a band yet, dude. Um, we met our drummer, uh, our old drummer. Yep. Uh, we just left. Uh, and she knows Grace. Grace from the Fae knows him. His his uh, <laughs> his father used to work at uh, her dad's uh, lawnmower shop. And he came up to me after a show one time, offered his services as a drummer. And so I was like, yeah, I'll hit you up. Um, so when I needed the band, I hit him up. Uh, he said, I might know a bass player. Got a bass player from his church. Um, I made a post on Instagram. And uh, I was like looking for lead guitar player. Because at the time I still played, you know, I still played acoustic. Yeah. And stuff. I was just trying to put something together last minute. 
And yeah, I got those three pieces. And Evan, Evan was the guy who slid up on my post about the looking for a lead guitar player. Like, yeah, I live in Alvin, dude. I was like, let's hold like a, a rehearsal. I heard a rehearsal <laughs> like one day, one day before. Yeah. We had a one day rehearsal. We played the show the next day and it was good enough. It was good enough. <laughs> good yeah. enough. Good you enough. got through it. You got through it. We got through it. Good enough. But uh, I was like, okay, we need we need something else. We need jam. We need jam. I was like, look, I got my friend. I'm starting to live with him now. He tucks me yeah. in. He tucks, <laughs> yeah. Things we are, tuck each other in. Things are really oh, getting, right. we're, we're, things really escalate between us, too. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> He's getting uncomfortable. Just well, what we need. Yeah, so Jim, he brought everybody over to my house, and I have a studio room built in. Like, this garage space? Yeah. This is great. The acoustics are great. It's insulated. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I like that. So I'm, tr- I'm trying to build one of these as well, but my, my room is all just guitars over the wall. There's a drum kit. There's a bass player. There's speakers, monitors, everything. Everybody showed up at my house. I looked at their set list. I'm like, okay. I let Trey play guitar. I was watching. <laughs> all right. Because I just wanted them to come over and rehearse. And then I picked up a guitar and started playing and haven't put it back down. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Were you in a band before? I was in another country band with my friend Micah Hanning. He's a very cool guy. He showed me a lot and learned a lot from him. About songwriting, about singing, about playing. And then I played in the guitar ensemble at the local community college. I was a dual credit student. And then um, I played a couple solo gigs just playing flamenco guitar. I see you at School of Rock a couple times. I'd go to jiu jitsu. Yeah. You know, yeah. With kids. Yeah. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I never did that. <laughs> hey, everybody's got to perfect their craft, dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, okay. So, you, did, did you do it like a battle of bands kind of thing, or you were going to do that or something? I did that. Yeah. I did nothing that. Came up I that? got nothing out of that. No. <laughs> no. Which was funny because I was actually going to go to that because it's in my hometown. <laughs> really? But I didn't go to it. I didn't get shit. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you posted, but I didn't know if you even did it. I, well, I thought I really thought you found these boys from that. I was like, man, that's pretty cool. But no. okay, nothing. Did you? So did people actually show up? Yeah, people showed up, dude. But you know, oh, it just wasn't what? good. Yeah. How bad I, was I'm it? I'm gonna be nice. No, I, people people were great. They were serious musicians. Okay, just they what we're looking like, for. Not the homies, like I said, dude. They just weren't the boys. Now, like uh, our old drummer, he showed up. Um, but I told him, I was like, Hey, 90% chance here. The job's yours just because you've already offered your services to me. But if you want an opportunity to actually play with me, come to this. So he showed up, dude, dude. I don't even remember who showed up, dude. I don't remember. <laughs> I remember thinking, Holy shit. I sound a whole lot better with a band behind me. Okay. And I need to get this right. So this one band showed up and they were a full band. Okay. Um, almost looking for a lead singer, um, better than the one they had, or whatever. I don't know. Um, so they show up, and I mean they have keys, they have a drummer, wow. they have a bass player. What kind of style guitar. music were they? I don't know. They like uh, probably like <sighs> like punk rock. Okay. Funk, something like that. You know. Um. And yeah, they really just really showed me that full band experience. And then afterwards, they come up to me and they just kind of start f- filling me with like empty promises. I could tell they were just giving me bullshit, kind of. And it was just like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it wasn't bullshit, but who knows? Uh, uh, n- nonetheless, I didn't feel comfortable like going on the road with these guys or anything like that anyway. Yeah, so absolutely got nothing out of that. Other yeah. than other than technically the drummer, but I knew he. You was, knew he was, yeah. yeah. Where, where'd you do that at? I did that at Big X and Alvin. Oh, okay. You played uh, there before, yeah. Yeah, they've they've been pretty good to me, man. Yeah, they uh they're a good little hole in the wall bar, for sure. So where were you playing prior to church? Okay, I was playing church, and I slid up on his post like five minutes after you posted it. I was like, hey, caught him quick. Yeah, that's good. Put the bait out there, set the hook. So, what's your what's your experience? How long have you been playing? How long have I been playing? Yeah, Man. <laughs> I don't know if I want to say six months. It aggravates oh, me. No, <laughs> it really <laughs> aggravates yeah. me. I've been playing for maybe a little less than four years. Every okay. day, okay, like every, every day. day for a little less than four years. Okay, you guys have never seen Martian Ranch. Huh? No, no, I've only just seen your post stuff. Like I said, I haven't yeah. seen you guys play yet. It is a mother freaking experience. I believe it, dude. The way this guy plays guitar just takes you back to a time when it was fucking awesome. Yeah. 
face is melting. Yes. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> face melt. Don't he just look like a guitar player? He does, though? man. Yeah. Evan you got a good looking band, dude. You guys look like you look legit. I mean, if I just see him, like, oh, these guys are in a band. Yeah, that's what we're going for. Dude, we had another Those are guy from Lip Sweat. We, <laughs> <laughs> we had remember Dane Dane Grande? Yeah, Dane. They, they kind of look alike. Dane could yeah, Dane could fit in with their band. Yeah, the guy he's, he's in New Orleans has that watch company that was on the show. I like watches. He looks like a he can fit in with your band. He, yeah, he'll just tell you all the time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> time to go. Uh, time to start. Uh, <laughs> time is up. Yeah, Trey just caught it. <laughs> that's good. Uh, uh, that's good Evan one. got it first. He's yeah. He's played guitar to least, and he's the smartest, I guess. <laughs> Funny so. joke, Vaughn. <laughs> Funny joke. Dude. Oh, that's great. So, where have y'all been playing at, man? What's what's been the biggest thing so far that y'all been doing? Foundation room. Okay, so that, that was, was cool. the night. That was the night I met you guys actually. Yeah. After uh, when y'all played at the House of Blues, that was a good time, Dale. That was a good time. That was a great time. Grace Dale. was drinking a whole bathtub of peach schnapps <laughs> really and whatever Grace. else it was. Grace had two bathtubs of uh, of alcohol that night. Oh. Was it was it called a bathtub? I don't. What was it called? Like a punch. It's bowl, got like rubber bowl? duckies in it, all kind yeah. of stuff. A fishbowl, probably. No, it but was it looks a, like a, it looks like a tub though. Vaughn, it was a fucking bathtub. Dude. It was a bathtub. <laughs> yeah. It had lights in it too. It did. I, I can only Im- I can only imagine the hangover. Yeah, that's, a, that's so, so oh, much sugar. Yeah, it wasn't bad. <laughs> you didn't drink enough if you didn't have a hangover. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So y'all played there. Who y'all play? Y'all play? Y'all opened up for some uh, Tavia Brooks. Okay. Yeah. She's a local Houston artist. Yeah, I looked her up whenever I heard mm-hmm. that. So that's cool, man. How was that experience? It was great. It was awesome. It was probably the tightest we've ever played. We were just really we were on it. It was fun. We 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 rehearsed a lot before that gig for sure. Mm-hmm. Wanted to make an impression in downtown Houston. Yeah, I don't care what f- freaking room it was. House of Blues is pretty cool. Dude, it's cool, man. Yeah. yeah, it's a cool spot. I never been. What? Where's the foundation room in that place? Uh, I don't know how to explain it. So there's. there's- yeah, there's multiple sections, but where we were, you had to go to the second floor. And it's this really nice room. Okay. It's just like the, I don't know how I would It's like a banquet it. room kind of Yeah, there? kind of like a banquet room. Okay. They have a bunch of like little green rooms where you can just rest, smoke or whatever. It was, yeah. It looked like like a like a Middle Eastern hookah lounge. Yeah. Okay. Wild yeah. Looking oh, it's cool. There, dude. Yeah. Pretty cool little vibe. Carpet on the walls. Walls were just carpet, like st- golden statues everywhere. <laughs> that was really cool. We were we were just at House Blues too, like a couple of weeks before that. We went and seen uh, Dylan Scott there. I haven't been there in years, man. But House Blues is a cool spot it's nice. for sure. Last time I was there, I went and saw Asher Roth. Dang, that's how long it's been. Golly, y'all probably didn't even know who that is. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's like a rapper, college rapper kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, he's. It was it was it was like fifteen twenty years ago when he was. He was huge. It was called What was that song called? Uh, I think it was I miss I love college. Yeah. Oh, I love college. Hey, I love drinking. Hey, I like smoking. Something like that. Uh, I, now I can't even remember the no, song. No, that song was a song he plays at church. Yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. 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 I know what uh-huh. song you're talking about, though, dude. So I, fill up my cup. Let's get fucked up. Who's I, on the table? He's kind of rapping. What? Yeah. I'm the champion at beer pong. Yes, that's it. Yeah. You got it right when See, you said See, I'm cool, Vaughn. Dude. I yeah. know what's up. Dude, I knew. I mean, I've hit around, apparently. You've always been cool. I just <laughs> It's just been that long since I've heard the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're questioning that. I love white rappers, dude. I do, too. Me, too. Oh, you speaking of white rappers. This is this, this white boy over here. <laughs> Jill Lincoln spit. Now. No, not me. Him. <laughs> Trey from the Fate. We was playing. We were doing Ain't No Sunshine. You just heard me, man. And he just like busted out there, was just spitting rhymes on yeah. the stage of Jackie's Brick House. It was wild. Feeling myself at Jackie's, dude. Oh, Hell yeah! But then you stopped. Oh, like, yeah, and everybody stop? was like, "Why?" Because I forgot the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing. Uh, You're doing Eminem song. Eminem's Eight Mile song. Oh, uh, lose yourself. Yeah, and I like got ten verses <laughs> in, and I'm just like, <laughs> it was cool though. Imagine yeah. how he feels. I was in shock. I had to sit down. I was like. <laughs> That great. one time I sang "Wondering Why" at uh, at karaoke. Oh yeah, you went full like 
Full Elvis. Full operatic. Yeah. 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 Oh, Vivaldi. That uh, freaked me out. Yeah. That freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> These guys know I got a, a thing for impressions sometimes. Yeah, he does. You, do. mm-hmm. you definitely do. Sometimes, like I, I, I was hanging out with our new drummer the other night, and I did like a Randy Hauser impression. Dude, he uh, can jam. Oh, dude, Randy Hauser puts on a show. He, uh, yeah, him, I told you about that. Him and him and Justin Moore coming in October. They're going to be playing in Houston. I, yes. I don't know where yet. I asked him, uh, which I, I, he didn't even know where when I, we they first announced it. So that'd be cool though. Randy Hauser, I seen him at the Rustic. Yeah, that's when we met him. We he played a show, man. He I do can jam. Is that where he, uh, Justin Moore played too? No. Okay. The few times I've seen Justin was in Baton Rouge, and then I seen him at La Burge that time. La Burge. He hadn't, he hadn't been around Houston uh, ever since I became to know him. Closest he'd been was like uh, Billy Bob's. He played there in Dallas or mm. Fort Worth, wherever that's at. I heard that's a dope place to play. Yeah. yeah. That's, that'd be cool. That's where, I saw, really cool. that's where I saw Randy. Really? Yeah, it was at Billy Bob's. <laughs> So, what's on the horizon? What's your next show? What's your next one? Okie's Yard House. When are you doing that? I'm doing that April 6th. April 6th, yeah. 7 to God 10. dang it. Come on, man. I'll be in Dallas. Yeah. Ah, Shoot. Four-day volley- volleyball tournament. These guys mm-hmm. got volleyball and car races. And Dude, some, I mean. Beef going on. <laughs> yeah, we got beef. We got, we got a lot of beef. <laughs> we got a whole lot of beef going on, we, we, I've been keeping up with y'all's beef. Well, we, we, we sell as much beef as we can. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Shout out Good Ranchers. <laughs> Shout out Good Ranchers. Shout dude. out Good Ranchers, our sponsor. <laughs> they supply us with the beef and we got to sell it. Uh. They they got a cool stage. I never been to a show out there, but that little outdoor stage is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah we uh, I went there a few weeks back. Actually, I think you were there. They had what they had a, a guy there that was doing all of uh, Zach Bryan covers. Oh, that's right, that's right. That was for our yeah. buddy's retirement party. Yep. You, you still just dislike was, Zach Bryan? Uh, no comment. He's overrated, dude. I'm I'm gonna completely yeah. disagree. I, He's not overrated. He's absolutely phenomenal. I can't get into it. You know what? It's my love language to get into it, okay? I'm not. All right, I'm good. That's your hate <laughs> language. I like real music. <laughs> no, I don't I don't mind it, but I, I just I don't get the hype myself personally. I feel the same way. Like I respect his lyrics. He's a great lyricist. I just can't I don't know what it is. It's, you, you know it's what bugs my music. You know what bugs me more is like his live shows. He says three words and just backs up and lets the whole crowd. I would be pissed off if I pay a bunch of money to go see him and you don't hear him say. Oh, I didn't know that. That was like one Dude, time. No, every show he doesn't like. He doesn't. He, he'll does sing. Does he wear in ears, dude? But the whole the whole crowd just sings his whole shit. And he lets I know. It, like he backs away from the mic. And well, when it. I when I wear in ears, dude, you can't hear the crowd. It's like That's a camp, like, but he does it like purposely. It's a big yeah campfire shit. I'm like, dude, I I don't come to hear ten thousand drunk people sing. Yeah, he's working for him though, ain't it? No, dude, ain't, that dude's huge, isn't he? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not dogging him. He oh, can make money and he's great, <laughs> but he's not my style. Yeah, of, no. like. I feel the same way. Yeah. I just never was a big fan of that. I'm gonna listen to every album of his tonight again. For the <laughs> 36 song album he got. <sighs> Jesus, Dude, if they're all 36, if they're all 36 seconds, it's really not that hard. You yeah, know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, it's like a mixtape. The 36. Yeah. That's Morgan Wallen. Okay, <laughs> well Zach's got a lot. Yeah, I mean. He does. I don't know. He like no. Zach. Him. Zach was, has one like that too. Yeah, Zach's got thirty plus on one, but yeah, thirty six is wow. His I will say his 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 um, live recorded show that he put an album out, which is I think it was like something about Netflix or Ticketmaster. I hate Ticketmaster or something. He did let the crowd sing. It was a little annoying. That's what I'm saying. It's just I'm playing to hear that artist. Like yeah, I don't, uh, you know like. Sing along is good, but don't let them like take over your show. Could like, you imagine that happened at Nickelback? That'd have been so bad. I know. It was like all of Houston just drunk Nickelback fans. I know. That was a fun night. That was an awesome night. Dale. Did y'all go to Nickelback? I we took him. To yeah, Nickelback, I took him right? Nickelback with us. <laughs> that was That's a fun. Nostalgic. That was fun. <laughs> it was a great show. I mean, I, I went. So I went and seen them last July when they start touring again after all those years. I've probably seen them. Five, six times in the early 2000s. Wow. And then when we see them last year, dude, they freaking jammed. It was them, Brantley Gilbert up before him. It was pretty cool. Oh, really? And then, uh, but yeah, then this, like I said, I had two extra chickens that night. I freaking, te- I texted you like, what, four hours before? Yeah. I'm like, hey, I got get here. I got <laughs> Brantley Gilbert was the worst concert I ever went to. Dude, he put I've on, heard that. He put on a good show when I saw him. 
I've heard he that good Brantley's the, voice isn't great live. I just, said, he sounded good to the Woodlands. I, I, I think it was more so because it was in the in NRG. Uh, I think yeah, could do it. NRG, oh, yeah, do it. NRG is not a great venue. It's not. All. No. And, and especially for rap country. I saw Metallica at NRG. Dude. That blew my hair back, blew my doors off. It was amazing. I was mosh pit, like 10 feet from James Headfield. Dang. Oh, man. I had whiplash the next day. <laughs> who uh, who opened up for him? Avenged Sevenfold. Oh, I love Avenged Sevenfold. They were good. Uh, one, they're kind of like, like a German metal band. I don't remember their name. Rammstein? No, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, Mike D was actually the first opener. Ooh. Oh, really? Yeah, that was cool. Do us. Such a do, 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 do. Was it Meshuggah? No doubt. They're too heavy for them. <laughs> I seen Meshuggah one time though for Tool, like in 2002. Oh, Tool sounds like a good show. Tool was a great show. I was in Beaumont, dude. Oh, hell yeah. Maynard, like, so I don't know if you've ever seen them, but Maynard usually uh, bands out there playing to the on the back right side of the stage. He has a little platform he stands on with his face pointing from the crowd. Yeah. He doesn't face the crowd. He's like, like hey, Jim yeah. Morrison. He's backwards. He, he's just backwards, and he's like, it's kind of like real dark. You can barely see him, and that's what he does. Like, so when, he, when he's perfect circle, it's way different. He's out there. He's not as weird as with Tool. Just I don't know. He's just a collected like dude. He's just Tool. He's uh, Tool. <laughs> he's got a he's got a winery in Arizona too. You know that? He's really? got his own wine. Yeah. Freaking metal guys. <laughs> yeah. So that's your so your guys. So what y'all's genre considered? Southern Rock. Southern Rock. Yeah. Southern so Rock. Your, your influence is definitely like Whiskey Meyer. You said yeah. Blackberry Smoke. Whiskey Did someone from Blackberry Smoke just pass away? Something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the drummer. drummer. Okay. Great Turner. Rest yeah. in peace. Rest in peace. I've too. seen you post something about it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've, man. He uh he messaged me after I sang I sang a Blackberry Smoke song, my my last performance on the show. Yeah, I remember that and on yeah, Idol. Yeah, he uh he sent me a DM um just like saying, hey, thanks for singing our song. And I was like, sorry, I butchered it, dude. But yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, he didn't have to do that. Also, did y'all hear about Mark Coleman, the UFC fighter? Yeah, saved his uh his parents from that burning house. He lost his dog, bro, Hammer, yep. the beautiful Rottweiler in a fire. And uh, he got a new puppy. And, like, me and Grace loved that story. And so I shared I shared his new puppy on my Instagram. He slid up. He said, thanks. Really? Mark freaking Coleman, dude. He's I'm a like, badass, awesome. dude. Hell yeah. Did man. you hear about that? No. His, his parents, his house, parents' house, right, was burning down? I think it was his house. And it was his, his parents, parents were there. With him, yeah. He got them out oh, and went back up. in to get the dog. He passed out. You know what? I did, I did then, read that. I read luckily, an article he, about it. And he was in ICU for a while. And yeah, it's crazy, man. It's cool having a blue check mark. It helps. It's nice, man. It helps, it's dude. Nice. I get free shot time <laughs> just from that blue check mark. Yeah. <laughs> Martian Ranch needs blue. Blue check mark. You got to do it. We'll get there, man. After our show at the Rustic. How, how do you even get a blue check mark these days? Are we talking about on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a process. It's not really a process. It was super easy for me, but I mean, it was like right after my audition aired, like next morning. Trey from the you have to go to like uh like get verified now. You know, it's all through Meta because Meta owns all of it, yep. and then uh, you prove it yourself by giving a picture of your ID. And then a link to a resource that uh, you're saying you are. Yeah, you got to have like news articles or something, some kind of like website stuff yeah. showing. Mine was the YouTube video of my audition. And so, you know, Cage Ninja, how he's got his? He tried for years and then his, uh, his back, pat, his back porch, he has a, like a stove on it or, and it caught fire and it burned part of his house. And they did a news article on it, and he used that, and that got him verified from his house getting to catch on fire. Cajun engine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know it's that easy. I just <laughs> got to go home and light the house on fire. Because you had to, so, to have something like uh, confirming that you ha- like it's it's yeah. just that's just that crazy. Like hell, Twitter back in the day, you had to have you had to link six different like websites to where you're cited in, or some like a something like a you were part of a article or something like that. No, Elon's just like just buy it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna pay for it. Yeah, you can subscribe to it now. Huh? Yeah, you can just. Everybody buy it. has a blue chip mark on Twitter. Yeah, I don't. I didn't do it on Twitter. I I'm like, so it's like I'm so not do, doing it. So do they even get? Do they give you? Uh, oh, on Twitter, we're talking Twitter. Never mind. Never Instagram, mind. you can buy it too now. Yeah. So what's the luster of having a blue check mark if you have to pay for it? It isn't as widespread as I thought it'd be. Thankfully. Yeah. 
because it could have got really bad. But yeah, it's like it's like fourteen bucks a month. Dude. It's like I wouldn't yeah. spend that. I don't even use Twitter enough to. I don't even use social media enough to justify having that. Twitter's bad, dude. I can't get on Twitter without seeing tits and somebody getting shot. Yeah. I love, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, surprisingly uh, enough, Vaughn's only on Twitter. That's his only social media. So no, no honestly, on one thing I will say about Twitter that does a really good job is you can see news from multiple different people. Real I'm not, time. I'm yeah. not one I'm not gonna go watch a news station and say, oh, that's that's you see live that's feed. realistic. Twitter yeah. Twitter yeah. was like the place for free agency for me. It was like just how I kept up with where everybody Tucker was Carlson. Going. That's what I watch on Twitter. Yeah. Tucker, Tucker Carlson, he he's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, in, the, yeah. in the greatest of ways. <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. I, I like him a lot. Yeah, that uh Twitter for anything live, Grammys Ward shows, big sporting events, UFCs. Yeah. That's it's, the best thing yeah, to follow because it's like so current, and you get the funniest people in the world <clears throat> talking shit about it too, which is even the best. Savages, dude. It's, they're mean people who don't give a shit. Zero, <laughs> zero shits on there, man. I love it. Uh, yeah, Twitter's great. Uh, so what happened? To your, so you got a new drummer. What happened with your? So he your, uh, he works with a company i guess you could say like his family owns it um but they run sound for a lot of different venues and stuff um and his grandpa has been doing it his whole life and his grandpa is getting up in age and is having a hard time getting around and uh i think brendan was seeing that and he just wants to step aside brendan's young he's too oh yeah. Yeah. okay he's young yeah he's a great kid and i think he saw that his grandpa needed some help and uh yeah he, he took it upon himself to be like hey i think i'm a He's a he's a lighting engineer. Is what he's been trained to do. Yeah, and he's very good at it too. So he does. He's gonna do Galveston County Rodeo here soon. Yeah, kid's mm-hmm. good. He's a genius. Yeah. So he's he's just taking a he's making a career path decision. Is what it seems like. Okay. So then, how hard was it find another drummer? Not hard at all. No. No. <laughs> well, it's probably, it's probably <laughs> yeah. easier when you got a band, I guess. Yeah. We had a so we had Brendan and then we had Dalton and Dalton was he's a good drummer. He's like Tool Mashuga drummer. Oh, like everything. Double, double bass. Yeah. <laughs> and then double kick drum. We yeah. had a tryout. We had a friend Joey tryout. We had Luke tryout. And Luke is good. Luke's pocket drummer. Luke's funky. Luke stays tight. He's got the good dynamics. And he's multi instrumentalist. He can harmonize. It was on a good show. And he lives three minutes away. Three from minutes your from house. my house. <laughs> so that's the new drummer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Do you tuck awesome. him in too? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a special thing between me and him. Oh, oh yeah, I do. Yeah. I get it. I stayed yeah. up till four o'clock in the morning playing Mario on his Nintendo Switch. So, so yeah, yeah. That's I right. was ready for y'all to go to bed. I don't know. <laughs> College Station. Like, was when a you good go to time, bed, y'all. College Station was a great time. Y'all ever been out there? Just like spent spent some time out there to party. Yeah, I've only been there for A and M games and. <sighs> I spent some time out there to party when I was in college. Okay. Yeah. You went to Oklahoma State, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So A&M played Nebraska Friday night at A&M March Madness in basketball. I can only assume that energy followed through the city the rest of the night. Yeah. Because it was fun, dude. Everybody was bumping. It, it was packed. I'm a dude that like has serious social anxiety, and so I'm just sitting there, I'm, like trying to vibe and have a good time. But the whole time, I just got my eyes on the entire room and shit. But man, we were having a great, great time, dude. And uh, there's a there's a restaurant out there called Fuego, and it's a tortilla tortilla cafe. I think is what they call it. But uh, I always go there every time I go to call the station. My brother graduated from A and M, and so uh, okay. Whenever he had important stuff going on at school, we always went up there. So I've spent time up there before. But now I haven't spent up there as an adult. So that was awesome. As a, as a can we, can we talk about that one time that I took you to a club? Let's talk about it. Houston? Yeah. Do you know, y'all know what numbers is? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen Seven Dust there a bunch of times. Flaw. Oh, hell yeah. It's okay, about, cool. It's about, like in that 2000s, <laughs> they had a ton of rock shows there. My dad like grew me up on Nine Inch Nails and like that kind of alternative okay. music. Okay, so... After the foundation room, mm. my whole family and the from the phase went to numbers. That's when y'all, that when y'all left. When y'all yeah, left, when we yeah. Left the okay, yeah, because I met your mom that mm-hmm. night. Okay, and <laughs> I don't remember much of what happened. It was a good time. I had a lot of Lone Star beer. And the next day, I read my check my messages <laughs> from Trey from the Fay. 
y'all got me in this busted ass club. It was. So I hated funny. it in numbers, dude. <laughs> I hated it in numbers. What? Oh my god. Yes, I'm fucking trick from the fade, dude. I'm not. I'm, He's not into. <laughs> And you know, like it's house music. Me, not, I mean, me I don't up. hate it. I don't hate it. It's just like you had to be on like fucking Molly, dude. Yeah, like, have a good time. You should have found bar. some. I, I could just ask somebody. Uh, uh no, no, no. I was wearing that really cool I am Houston shirt. Yeah, and so like everybody was giving me compliments at the bar. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, dude, there was this guy there that was. Um, he obviously uh, swings for the other team. <laughs> And he was wearing like the exact same shirt as Julian. Oh, he's oh. Right. <laughs> so like it'd be like my, Julian, dude. My pretty shirt. He just, it was pretty, dude. It was pretty shirt. That's what I'm I said that's pretty shirt. He turns around. He's wearing makeup. I'm like, what the fuck happened to Julian? <laughs> no, that's not Julian. It's just dark in there. But uh, yeah. I mean, I I tried to have fun. It's just not my spot. I mean, I, yeah, it's not for everybody. That piano bar is where I was having my time at, dude. I told you about that. We so when he came in, I was like, I went, I was like, I went talk to the, uh, I went talk to the manager. I had him come. I was like, hey, I want to get him on stage, sing. I was like, oh, you got to talk to the band director. I was like, okay, so I got to look that talk to that guy. And he was cool though. I was like, I was wondering if it was going to happen. And then we had a uh, Trey went up there and killed it, sang a little Tennessee whiskey. That was fun, man. That was a lot of fun. You sang Tennessee whiskey two times in one night. In one night. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What happens it's when great. you're a Chris Stapleton uh, cover singer? <laughs> yeah, no, but dude, the crowd went nuts, man. Yeah. When he when he sang it, oh man, they it was a good time. That was pretty cool. We got an ongoing like inside joke. Or no, don't come up to me after every show. Has anybody told you? <laughs> Has anybody ever told you <laughs> you sound just you? like Chris Stapleton? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we did our show uh, Friday in Cause Station. A nice handsome fellow walked up to me. He's like, "I'll ever do any Chris Stapleton." So. Well, Literally just sang Tennessee whiskey. But, uh, yeah. Oh, it's George Jones. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're right. That's David yeah. Alaco. That's George Jones. Whatever. But uh, it's like, no, nah, dude. I sound so much like him. We 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 really try to stay away from doing too much Chris. But uh, he's he's got a lot of songs that we just like to we we he's love to jam. play. He's got some great music, yeah, man. He, does. he, he really does. does. You know, I got burnt. I I loved him when he first came out, and I got burnt out for a while. And then that last album he put back out, he made me a fan again. I'm like, oh, dude, yeah. it was so well. Like, there's songs just, there was no bad song on that album. Mm-mm. I was like, holy shit, man. I was like, I can't hate on the guy. I didn't, like, I just, I saw him like a bunch of times live. And it's just like, he's great. But it's just, it's not a, like a big performance. You know, like, you think you're going to see. Gonna admit, now, like, if you're a guy. But he sounds if, if you're a fan of a guy that shreds, Chris Stapleton is really fun to watch, dude. Is like I saw him at the rodeo, and then I was like, "Man, this guy's kind of boring." I don't know. He he sounds fine, but yeah, he'll even warn you before shows. Uh, I don't. We don't do a whole lot of moving around. I'm just gonna play some music yeah. for you. But we put, we saw him at the Woodlands, and he like shredded it. Dude. Really? Fucking. What's a different show too? The rodeo is such so, a different. Yeah. Man, it's just so time. Got to be done in an hour or so yeah. lot. Nickelback was awesome, but like I know that show could have been so much better. Dude, when I seen, yeah, because they played for about two hours of the Woodlands. Yeah. And it's like, dude, they got fire on the stage the whole time. Yeah. And That's dude, the one thing I hate about Houston Rodeo is I wish the pyro was on stage, not like on the side of it. Yeah. I like it. I know that'd probably be difficult for the spinning stage. Yeah. It's, it's, some safety concerns. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably, there's a lot of moving parts on that stage, but yeah. yeah. I really did. Uh, Nickelback's freaking. Playing like, all the good ones too. They did. They got they got the jams out. <laughs> Nickelback, <laughs> man. That's what his dad said too. I was like, we went and saw Nickelback last night. He just went he 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 he. I was like, what the fuck was that? I mean, dude? I mean, 2005. All you heard was Nickelback. Yeah, that was it, dude. We were in the middle of the show. And they started playing How You Remind Me. I'm like, dude, just said, Grace, I remember this in my senior year. I was like, what year? That's uh, 2000. I said, you're how old are you? A couple years old. She goes, I wasn't even born yet. It was two years before she was born. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I feel so old, dude. Nah, man. That's crazy, huh? Yeah, that's wild. That's <laughs> wild. wild. I don't know, because like, 
I don't think of Nickelback that way. I think of Nickelback just kind of. But they've been popper so long. I guess. But so, I mean, dude. that was their first big hit came out. We were like, oh shit, man, yeah. these guys are badass. I've been around a while. I didn't really realize that. Early 2000 rock was a yeah. hell of a time. I didn't though. realize how much Nickelback I knew till I went to the Really? Show. Yeah. <laughs> shit. Like, oh, wow. It's, it's all bangers. That's TikTok, why. TikTok loves Nickelback, too. <laughs> dude, Vine. Vine loved Nickelback. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Hey, you find Vine's about what I remember about Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> Is Vine even a thing anymore? No. no. <laughs> they got bought out. I mean, the best thing about Vine was Bo Burnham. Bo was oh, Luke Combs. Uh, no. Yeah, Luke Combs was pretty popular. Yeah, so you guess he got I guess that. I, that's I how he got his didn't deal. Didn't even know he was on Vine. That's how he got his. Yeah, that's well, how he yeah. got famous. What was you could only post seven seconds. Seven mm-hmm. seconds. Yeah, I remember when he was doing like covers of like "She Got the Best of Me" and like yeah, twenty fifteen hurricane and, and stuff. Hurricane like... and stuff. Yeah, he made funny stuff too. Really? Yeah. I wasn't big on Vine. I loved Vine. Vine was awesome. The fat kid with the spoons over his eyes. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Blocking out the Blocking haters. Out the haters. <laughs> how old? Are, how old are you guys? I'm twenty. I'm twenty one. Hell yeah. Yeah. And you're what? 22. Okay. Old enough. 20 years old, man. Yeah. Young. That's why I wasn't at uh, any of the bars. Yeah. That's why I didn't meet you that night. Yeah. He yeah. looks He looks the oldest out of all of us, but... Uh, I mean, you definitely look old. You look at least 21. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, I know you guys are young, though. You don't You don't have a fake ID? Is that not a thing these days? Eh. It's a little I, harder well, to get by yeah. with one. He seems like a good guy. He's not going to do that. Yeah, so you got that dog in him another game. <laughs> it's a little bit harder well, these days, man. I think they can tell when one's fake. I'm sure it ain't worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it at all. I mean, it's not. So you guys writing a bunch of music? We have five, six originals now. And we're always coming with ideas, but we need to have another day. Did you listen to the song I wrote last week, Jim? Uh, I did. Cool. I know you did, Evan, because he asked if I thought it, if I uh, if I wrote it about you, <laughs> and I did. I wrote it about. What's, what's about the name me? of the song? It's called Roses. Oh, it's definitely about him. Look at his shirt. Yeah, yeah. It's the it's, floral. Did you Did you listen to it? <laughs> no, he was busy. Dude, to be fair, you, you mean, I, yeah, I was probably in Dallas. Oh, yeah, we're, gonna, or something. we're gonna play a tune to that later. Check your messages. So. <laughs> What what about the songs you played? Like so, you came to my house that time. Played you played a couple songs that you you are you bringing those? You're gonna record those? Yeah, those sure. are great. I don't know. I don't know which ones I played for you. Something about uh, God dang it! Something about here, big fan. Coast of Texas, Coast yes, of Texas, yeah. <laughs> That's a badass yeah, song. We've, we've we've southern southern rockified. Yeah, we've marched and ranched. Okay, that was a great lyrics though. I, saw, I remember that. That was a cool song. We love that one. So who does a lot of the writing? I write a lot. Uh, we since 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 we've got together, uh, we've had a few where the three of us just kind of sit down together and put some lyrics down. And uh, Julian actually um, incorporated a lot of words to a song that we have called "Fine Without You" um, that he wrote, um, kind of poetically. <laughs> well, whenever, whenever he gave it to me, I was like, yeah, "Yeah, man, these words are beautiful." And I think they're kind of a little too beautiful, though, dude. Yeah. And he was like, "We'll do something with it," and I was like, "Within like five minutes, I did." We'll add some contractions. Yeah. <laughs> some angst. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you got to fade up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great song, dude. It's called "Fine Without You." It's such an awesome song. Um. And yeah, we we might sing that for you guys tonight. But how hard is how hard is the write music? I put music down to. The hardest thing is finding inspiration. Okay. Absolutely. It, it, we can sit down, and I think we wrote that song in one day, like four hours, just because mm-hmm. we were all there together. It was a rainy day. It was good vibes, freaking whiskey. But other days, like, you just, there's nothing. Right. I can mm-hmm. come up with guitar riffs all the time. Oh, yeah. Just That's easy. funky rhythm riffs. He can up lead bricks. Do you remember them? Oh, yeah. No. Uh, well. Well. <laughs> well I don't depends. remember them great, dude. I'm Sometimes they come back later. <laughs> they come back. They come and go. You got to start recording, dude. Just put it. Just put, put it. Yeah, that's a good idea. But usually, just yeah. just to hear. But like, you ever watched? You're, you're fans of the Eagles. Oh yeah. yeah. You watched the documentary of the Eagles, yep. and they were talking about the, when they did Hotel California. Mm-hmm. That first, and they're like, I hope you're recording that because <laughs> they had that first riff with him and Joe uh-huh. Walsh, and uh, <laughs> was, when they're going back oh, and forth, <laughs> and they're like, dude, I hope you're recording that. Then that was like the song. That was it. Mm-hmm, like yeah. they fucking just killed it, just fucking around, kind of like you know. 
Man, Joe Walsh is so great. Yeah, he's incredible. In in that documentary, they talk about songwriting, and it's never been truer to me than we're trying to do it. But what Jackson Brown says is, you sit down, you write one song, and you're going to write five more, and they're all going to suck. But eventually, you'll start writing ones that are pretty good, and you just got to keep doing it. Dude, my favorite, just right. my favorite part from that documentary is how Take It Easy was a J- Jackson Brown song. Yeah. He couldn't write that second verse. Gives it to to them and uh Frey freaking writes the goddamn second verse to the wins the wins Oklahoma part. I'm standing on a yeah, yeah, and then it's their yeah. biggest song yeah. ever. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's so That's nuts. Great. They like he couldn't they couldn't write a second verse, Jackson Brown, so he gave it to the Eagles. So I hear. And Glenn Frey, he wrote that second verse and that was like their all time biggest song. That's awesome. It's so crazy. Like songwriting is cool. That's why I love documentaries on bands. Like that's yeah. my favorite shit to watch. Foo Fighters was a cool one too. Yeah. We I was watched, up watching go ahead. I've been talking. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We watched uh we watched the Leonard Skinner documentary. That was good too. If I, if I leave here tomorrow. Yep. And uh by God that made me cry, dude. Holy moly, it's a good documentary. The coolest thing about it for me I saw is like all that music they put out from when they signed he dies like two years. I was like, dude, they yeah. freaking put out yes. some music. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. I didn't realize it's like that, Tupac. Dude. Tupac had all them songs in like just a few years. You're like, you feel like they've been a band for 15 years I playing, know. but it was like a, a short window where all them records came from. They lived together and they played every day. Yeah. Yep. In a little well, shack. It was cool how they talked about how, the, yeah, it's, it's, it's called the Hell House. They talked about how tight they were because they played it yep. over and over and over. And like it was just, yeah. They said they, they guys wanted to be sound exactly the same every mm-hmm. time. So that's a good one too. Lon's missing out, dude. He's he's still listening to Asher Ross <laughs> <laughs> and Zach Bryan. <laughs> dude, this is that Zach Bryan. So I grew up. My dad was a rocker. He'd been playing guitar since like eight years old. Oh, he yeah. still plays every night. He was in bands my whole life. I remember going on the weekends, helping him set stuff up. He was in a band, and uh, they had a cool thing. They had a they they got second in a battle of bands in New Orleans. And the the winner got to go tour in Europe with Deep Purple. Oh wow! Wow. So this <laughs> That's is cool. but this is what's crazy. So. They uh, their name of the band was called Camerata, but they played they were kind of like Pink Floyd Rush, yeah, that's cool Pink, band name. Pink Floyd Rush, kind of like that kind of yeah, vibe. Psychedelic rock. Yeah, my dad was big like speed metal, like progressive, like uh, Queens right back in the day when they were real heavy in the seventies, like that kind of stuff. And so they got second on in that. So then, like uh, not far before the tour, the band that won got in a wreck, and like two of the guys died. Oh, like in a like wow. Like the van, they're all traveling yeah, yeah, somewhere. Yeah. And so they got in touch with, like, I guess my dad's band. And the drummer at the time, Dwayne, he, same kind of way. He had a family business. His dad was getting older. His hardware shop in, like, our hometown. And he decided he didn't want to do it. And they never, like, so they could have had a chance to go play with Deep Purple. And, wow. uh, like, in their European leg of their thing. And just, my dad's like, man, it's just something that could have, could have been, just didn't, didn't happen. It was just, it was like in the early 90s. Mm been cool man but wow it would have been great i grew up like but yeah he's still like like he's into death metal like even now like he'll like hey man check this band out or i'll go to his house he's like man i try to i finally figure out how the hell kill switch played this and he's like they do tune the shit of the guitar and they go in there and he starts playing it just and he has his little drum kit and he'll put the drum kit on and he'll rip it and it sounds just he? huh how old is he 64 65 yeah. 65 yeah That's oh he's awesome. just, he's a rocker man yeah. like he he's still into the death like the heavy Heavy shit. He was like, he'll text me, "Hey man, you heard this band yet?" And it'd be shit I never heard of. Like, <laughs> just wild. He just he's still in it, man. <laughs> That's something that I can't. Evan doesn't do. I have at my, my wall in my house. I have fifteen guitars, and I have some that are like all kind of pointy and angled and black and like yep. look metal looking. So I'll start playing one of those one day, and he'll come up and just like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> look, I enjoy listening to it, but I cannot. I just can't play it. I don't get the same kind of joy. What, feeling. what do you play? Les Paul or something? Yeah, I play Les Paul, but I'm talking about the music. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. The style. Yeah. Um, I really like a lot of blues, Southern rock. It's just that, like, that's my domain. Allman Brothers. Allman Brothers. What is that what made you start playing them guys? Yeah. Skinner. Vaughn plays harmonica. Oh, yeah. Oh, Dude. Cool. Maybe we could get you an appearance on stage. <laughs> we need you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We need a harmonica player, Vaughn. I'll butcher that thing so Come bad. Come on. Oh, I will. I bought, him, I, I bought him a personalized one for his birthday because he was, that was Christmas. That was your birthday. Uh, Christmas. It was Christmas. We, he, he, made a, he made a thing saying, man, I got some free time. I'm in hotels. I want to start 
I want to play an instrument. So it's about the harmonica. So I went, I got on Etsy and I got him one engraved with his name and his, it says Don't Know the Podcast and our, our start date. And then, uh, who you want to play the horse? Dude. Oh, shit, yeah. History. Oh, yeah. I, I'm going to be the next blues traveler. <laughs> <laughs> New member of Marshall Ranch right there. Long. Dude, I'm hey, I'll come make a guest appearance. Dude. I'll just sit there and we, we can record what it, y'all want it to sound like. <laughs> yeah, and, I'll, you know, <laughs> and I will act like I'm playing it. We'll take the guts out of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vaughn on the harmonica. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, dude. I'll play the mouth trumpet too. Whatever y'all need. Kazoo? The triangle? I think the kazoo would actually be pretty, pretty uh, tough. We need somebody to, do. to play keys. To play keys? Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. No. Hey boys, what is a uh what's a dobro? A dobro is it's like a guitar, but it has a very thick woody neck and it has a resonator built on top of it. It's mm-hmm. like an acoustic guitar. You play it on your lap. Daily you play slide yeah. on it. It's like a steel guitar kind of like yeah. that yeah. kind of stuff. Dude, my so my dad, he like he'd always had guitars and like so he bought a twelve string electric one time. Oh cool. Because he's like he's like, Yeah, I went to guitar center in Beaumont. He goes, I start playing. Frick. The guy was like, these things are tough. This thing's tough to play. He's like, oh, he's been playing his whole life. He's like, oh, let me see it. And he said, uh, he goes, the guy freaked out, started playing an Aussie song on the freaking guitar. The guy could, you know, he's like, he wasn't expecting somebody to just walk in and play that thing properly, you know. <laughs> I remember my first show was with him in ninth grade with, uh, it was Quiet Riot, Warrant, and Slaughter. Wow. And Warrant was the, you know, she's my cherry, uh, cherry pie. Mm-hmm. But they have a song called Uncle Tom's Cabin. If you ever heard it, it jams. And they have, tw- they play with 12 string in that, and it's fucking badass. You check that song out. It's kind of, it's kind of like, it's kind of country ish sounding, and then it kicks into hard rock. Yeah. But that's a cool, you need to check that out. Uncle Tom's Cabin. Lyrics are incredible too. Does more strings make it sound like clear or something? No, it's a different. It's it kind of gives it like a chorus effect. That's the way I see it. it like more it, robust. Yeah. Explain what a chorus pedal is, Jim. A chorus pedal. Man, I don't know if I could explain what a chorus pedal does. It's basically like a bunch of harmonizers together, and once you, they just blend. Okay. <laughs> like in harmony, I guess. I don't know how to explain it. It's like tracing by himself or singing with a choir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chorus, choir. I got you. Yeah. I had a fraternity brother who had a hummingbird at our fraternity house. It's like some 12 string. Oh. He loved it. And he played it well. He I, loved didn't, it. I didn't know what the different what the difference <laughs> was between 12, 6. I should be like he had a choir of hummingbirds. And then was- <laughs> yeah. I thought, I, that, story, that story went somewhere different. I thought it was no, I think that No, I think that's the name of the guitar. I thought he had yeah, a hummingbird. Right. I was like, dude, that's a crazy get pet to have. In a <laughs> but honestly, I do, think, I do think the guitar flew. So, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's y'all's, what's y'all's pregame ritual like for shows? Uh. Putting up a bunch of damn equipment. Yeah, yeah, you ain't got, you ain't got those guys yet. Yeah, no. you get it. That takes the edge off. Once you get it set up, you're like, okay, yeah, I'm ready. I usually usually lose my cool. Usually get pretty pretty stressed out. Julian's done a really good job here lately, guys. We have to say when when Martian Ranch first started out, um, he got a little <laughs> hot between setup and stuff. Yeah, he's eased out a little bit. I think you know. Why's that? You just want it to be perfect. You get stressed out. I tend to be pretty OCD. He's just like how it looks, or yes, he's a grinder, dude. And when it's time to do fucking work, it's time to do fucking work. Man. Yeah, and, and he don't he don't play around. I and, like uh, you got to have that guy in your group, though. Yeah, that's what I needed, Dale. I'm so happy I found these dudes. Like you have no idea. That's exactly what I needed. Was just somebody to be like, Trey, get off your ass. Yeah, and fucking <laughs> play some music, dude. Like, don't unplug your XLR dude. cable, <laughs> yeah. dude. That 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 stuff, plugging in XLR cables and all that stuff, drives me insane. Like before y'all came over, I'm having to do. It's like, dude. I'm trying to like, concentrate. <laughs> you think this is hard, man? I'm trying to concentrate, and then I can't, and then it's I forget which one I put where. It's like a bomb that go off. He's over there. <laughs> uh, I'm like, good Dude, God. Our sound guy is 15 years old. What? And he's doing this shit, bro. Oh, he had school tonight. That's tomorrow. That's why he couldn't <laughs> be here. <laughs> yeah, he's a prodigy, dude. Shout out Judah, man. He uh, he 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 knows exactly where all that stuff goes, man. Judah is my kid brother. Oh, okay. Yes. And he's a drummer. We already have a drummer. So I need somebody to be sound guy. And he's obsessed with it. I think that's all he does. Mm-hmm. So he saved up all of his pennies, 
dropped two G's, bought a brand new digital board because our old board was like glitching out of shows. And that's all he studies. So if you're problem about noise gate, he would no problem. Yeah. We'll call, oh. we'll call Jude over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, does he do any moonlighting? I'll pay him a Pokemon card <laughs> does, or something. Does he, yeah. does like, he do any moonlighting for Dale, not yeah. Dale podcast? Yeah. Oh, Dude, he'll make you feel like a fucking idiot, too. Yeah, he's yeah. condescending talking to you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Judah, f- don't forget, dude. You're 15, dog. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just get out of my way, dude. I got this. So, uh, man. That's hilarious. Uh, He's just a kid. <laughs> He's a great kid. He's, He's a really good kid. Good. But because they were like smarter, you, I get it. They're like, dude, they think it's so easy to them. You're like, you're an idiot. Why can't you figure this out? Like, because yeah. I don't fuck with it. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's not my. I thing. play guitar. I didn't watch the YouTube video, dude. <laughs> dude, you can do anything on YouTube. I know. Oh yeah. So what's your uh, what y'all's opening right now? What y'all opening with? It's a song we wrote. Yeah, I'm your man. It was yeah. for the longest time. It was Midnight Train to Memphis. Um, and we'll still do that one if we're like in front of a crowd who wants more popular music. Yeah. Um, but here lately, just to introduce Martian Ranch is who we are. We've been doing I'm Your Man, which is a super cool rock and roll song. Yeah. About being a POS, about just being a dude who ain't worth a shit and just likes to break girls' hearts. That's all he ever does. Hell yeah. That down, I was taking a poop one day. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I was sitting, do on, your best thinking, I I was think. sitting on the couch, man. And I just you're, like, you're taking a poop on the couch. <laughs> no, 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 Trey. So before the get shit, this, tell this guy to get up. No, this was this, this, was, this was this was this was pre shit. <laughs> get him some potty pads. <laughs> pre shit, adult diaper. Pre shit. Okay, sitting on the couch. I'm playing this E to a D to an A chord. That just sounds real pretty and rock and rollish. And I was like, man, that sounds. And I go take a poop, and I'm like, "What if I wrote a song where, like, the bass line is like, if you want a guy who's gonna be there for you, that ain't me. But if you want a guy who's gonna break your heart, I'm your man." And I was like, "I'm gonna go to the couch and write something down for that." And I'm I might have played that one in front of you and Cajun Ninja because I've had that one in my pocket for a while. And okay. The sound didn't really come out till I got with the band though. Okay. That's a fun song, dude. That one jams? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a good opener. <laughs> it jams. That's why we open with uh, it. Okay. Yeah. So what's your closer? Another original. Which one? Uh, this one is called Chasing Mine. Um, and I I had the idea for this song in the hotel room in Los Angeles while I was doing filming for Idol. Back in December of 2020, um, we were only allowed to bring ourselves and our instruments. No guests were allowed to come with us at the time. Um, and we were having a rough time with our females who were at home and some people were dealing with girls who couldn't really handle the concept of being away from home for a while to do this as a living. And, uh, I was like, man, that's kind of, that's kind of a cool concept for a song. And I come up with the, the phrase, uh, you keep having your dreams while I'm out here chasing mine. Like, uh, the woman has dreams of the man having an everyday nine to five job, kids, dogs, a backyard with a fence. Yeah. Um, and I have dreams of being out on the road, not settling down anywhere, living on a tour bus the rest of my life and fucking playing rock and roll, dude. And so I was like, that's a cool song. And actually when I wrote it, it was sad and then I brought it to Martian Ranch, and Julian and Evan said, nah. nah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's too cool of a fucking song to be <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we close with that one, and it's it's like a Leonard Skinner jam, man. It's yeah. like it's our free bird. Oh, yeah. It's our free bird, man. It's eight minutes long? I mean, it, it can be. It can be. You can it, jam. It, it, can easily, it can be longer. It can easily be eight minutes long. I just need more guitar solos. Yeah. Yeah. Lyrics, yeah. guitar solos. It's it's a work in progress. That's our but. solution to everything. Just give Evan a guitar solo. Yeah. 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 If we need if we need a little bit more time, like three hour gig, and we're like fifteen minutes, and we're on our last song, we're just like maybe these last two, Evan. Why don't you just fuck? Yeah. Shred. Uh-huh. Melt faces. Yep. He <laughs> says no problem. <laughs> now I can bring my harmonica. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you it's open, open jam. Open jam. Dude, that's awesome. I love to hear it. <laughs> Songwriting's cool like that, dude. It's just you know, it's it's these little ideas that come to you. 
Like that was an idea I had in December of 2022 and it wasn't put on paper until like summer of last year. Okay. So it's just like, you know, um, that song roses. I had that idea like a year ago and I just now put words to paper. And I feel like that's how songs come about. Like I, I listened to podcasts like with like Ernest and Morgan. Yeah. And uh, they, they were talking about uh, somebody's problem. Uh, a song of Morgan yep. Wallen's dangerous album. And, uh, it's a story where they were driving through Nashville on, down Broadway and a girl in a lifted truck cut them off and like honked their horn and flipped them the bird. And uh, Morgan was like, who the hell was that? And Ernest goes, I don't know, but that looks like somebody's problem. Yeah. And they're like, so like coming up with shit like that. And then that, that songwriting, dude. Ernest is yeah. incredible. But like, like Julian was saying, it's, it's kind of rare when something cool, like, Chasing mine or I'm your man comes to mind, but when it does, I write it down. Write that shit down. Yeah. Write it down. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, songwriting process is we'll just sit down and be like, okay, give me ideas. Give me ideas. Give me ideas. What can we do? What can we do with this? Uh, Julian, give us a riff. Uh, Evan, give us a little tingle. You know what I mean? <laughs> a little tingle, huh? So when, when do you think you're going to uh, put something down on, on wax, man? Whenever I feel like it. Okay. <laughs> No, well, it, for real, it's it's uh it's something we need we need yeah. we need mm-hmm. to lock down and do um, do a little EP or something. We're we're trying to find the right producer. Okay, we need our Rick Rubin. To be honest with you, yeah. he's incredible too. Right? I think we have the equipment to do so right now, and and in house. I think we could set everything up in his house right now and record. But we need somebody who knows what they're doing after that. Mix it, yeah, yeah. do the engineer, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, do you speak so, in Rick? If there's any mixers out there, hit us up on Instagram at Watch and Ranch. Dude, why don't you hit them up on Fiverr? <laughs> on what? On oh, man. Fiverr. Man. <laughs> Come on, man. What? Fiverr's got a bunch of people. Well, What's dude. Fiverr? You pay somebody, like, like our... You're paying five bucks? No, it's or not five more. bucks. It's like our, our, our rap for our our podcast, that came from Fiverr. Oh, yeah. 30 bucks. Oh, I paid yeah. 30 bucks. Some guys made that rap uh, for us. I love that rap so yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All you got to do wow. is send them your raw audio. The Dale Not Dale yeah. podcast. This one's, this one's to the Still Tipping beat, too. But like, <laughs> I, we, we said, hey, I want Still Tipping beat. They did our first one, too. So I'm like, okay, hey, this one, we got me, him, we got Magnus, and they were a shirt off. They mentioned that. They mentioned Good Ranchers. <laughs> like they do all of our stuff in this rap. And it was like, oh, wow. first, first iteration. Boom, is it. The rapper on Fiverr. Cool. Yeah. Hey, it was thirty bucks, and then for five bucks more on the first one, they did a puppet video to it. So we had a video of a pu- yeah. these puppets rapping it. <laughs> that looked nothing like you guys. No, that, that was just, just that was one of the two white ones we had to pick uh, up from. No. <laughs> we got to pick it's our ca- we got to pick our characters though. Yeah, we did. I got the one with tattoos and the beard. He was tatted up too, dude. Yeah, yeah, he was. <laughs> he was, tatted and it was inside white. of a Chipotle. Yeah, we said we want to be inside of Chipotle. That's our favorite place to eat. Yeah. Those were the only white that puppets. Man. I think so. <laughs> Except for like old, like old, like old grumpy men. Thing. Yeah, it's you know? good. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I want to get one. I want to do one animated. Yeah, oh, that'd be cool. Hire like an animator. To- they got them on Fiverr. Yeah, yeah. Shoot, I'm sure. I mean, you guys are getting connection. I'm sure you could start. My my thing is that I'm trying to do all of it like indie, just from the bottom up. So I've been I've been teaching myself. That's how I can make the brand. I taught myself how to use PowerPoint. My my dad helped show me a lot. That's how I created that brand. But then I've started using um, Adobe Illustrator, learning how to use Photoshop, all these different things to create branding and images because I'm trying to get into merch next. Okay. So my brother taught himself how to work the soundboard. I taught myself how to do all the PA and what year to buy just by learning YouTubing, Wikipediaing, everything else. So I'm trying to learn how to do, do the producing as well. But someone who can just tell us, you know, that song's cool. But what if you did this instead? Yeah. Hmm. No, I think having yeah, I was just almost like a kind of consultant, right? To get mm-hmm. to keep like, hey, we want to keep it ourselves, do our yeah. stuff in house, but we need somebody to at least right smarter than us with this that can just give me some pointers. Yeah, that, that's that's the Rick Rubin thing is he doesn't actually touch any faders. No, he goes, hey, Colt, you guys are cool. The first album was great. But have you heard of ACDC? Let's release Electric, and then it's just like gnarly. The Beastie Boys, whatever. Yeah, I've watched his Rogan episode. Was awesome. Oh, I didn't know he had one. Dude, hey, so one of the cool, he talked about a few things. One of my favorite was uh you friend the system of a down. Yeah. So on uh was it not toxicity, but the other one. Ariels? No, the other big one. 
Hold on. You know that part where they go, Father, Father, Father. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that verse, Serge could not, he said, man, I don't have a verse for that part. And uh, he says, so at Rick Rubin's house. He's like, man, I, he walked into his office. I can't, I can't figure it out. He goes, all right, man. He goes, see all these books on my wall? Pick a book out. He goes and picks a book, opens it up. He goes, open the book, put your finger on it. And, and that was that, Father, dear. He goes, it had nothing to do with the song, but I, wow. he, he just sang that as the verse. And that was like one of their wow. most popular verses in that song. And Rick's like, hey, just pick a book, open it up, pick a spot. That's what you're going to sing. Yeah. And that's what that was. We need that guy. I was like, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Rock and roll, man. Dude. That's crazy. And then the other one was the uh, Chili Peppers. When they were talking, when you did that second, that uh, sex magic. Blood, sex, sugar magic. Yeah. Yeah. They were talking about songs. And then uh, he was like going through all this stuff. They already did another album before. It was like their album prior. They weren't happy with it. So they got with Rick again. And uh, he said he was putting stuff in front of him. I think he was putting stuff in front of him. He's like, man, what else you got? And he's like, oh, I got this, I got this poem, but I don't, I don't really like it. It's yeah. kind of, kind of whatever. Nobody, that's kind of vulnerable. And so he said, let me hear it. And so he did it, and that was uh, what's their biggest song? The old one, Under the Bridge. Mm-hmm. That was Under the Bridge. He's wow. like, no, we're gonna record it. Boom, and they recorded. It. That's one of their biggest songs ever. Because he told yeah. him, he's like, no, man, it, just a little push. Yeah, he's like, no, you need to, you need to perform that. You need to. Like play that one. That's what we need. So we yeah, need. incredible though. That's what we need. Like to have that kind of. I don't know, man. It's just wild. Yeah. That's what I love about music. I, I can't play nothing, but yeah. I, I love music. Man. We wanna. We wanna. I think. I think we all agree that we wanna spend some. Some time in Nashville as well, because mm-hmm. um, I think I think you can really find people like that out there, but you can also find really bad people well, out just, there as well. You got to be around the machine. Yeah. Yep. That's where the machine is. Yeah, I'm sure it's uh, no, be tough. I mean, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's it's such an entertainment business too. Like you can, you can sound great, you know, but you know, especially for a guy like me, what separates me from Chris Stapleton? You know what? You guys sound a lot alike, but we already have Chris. So what can we do? Yeah. That's, different and martian ranch is that difference that's you know that's that's kind of what i was looking for i'm no longer one solo guy that looks like or, or that looks like luke combs and sounds like martian or, or sounds like chris stapleton you know we're yeah we're like a whole group and we're between between our outfits you know we look pretty groovy right now and this is pretty <laughs> pretty much stage attire right here between that and then just the way that these guys play it's like it's a it's an experience yeah i've always wanted to be an ar guy yeah i got a good ear for music i always i can hear stuff i'm like okay this could be Mm -hmm. like when i listen to a lot of music i'm like okay this should be their next single and that's always kind of how i don't know i I like i listen to music a lot so i've always just wanted to wear bell-bottom corduroys man do it (laughs) no reason not to that's beautiful i love that it's beautiful it's beautiful (laughs) so what what would be your first single you have Um, it you think y'all have one that'd be are we thinking of just releasing ep first yeah i think that's what we might do now so i know i know kind of the the route to do it is to release like one two three singles and then boom ep Mm -hmm. um but we're building kind of like a little fan base right now. You know, people come and check us out and stuff. And uh, I think they come and watch our shows. And uh, almost to a point where now they're going to be like, hey, I want to hear I'm Your Man. You know, I want to hear Chasing Mine. I want to hear Memory Mike. It's like, I heard that at your concert, and I really want to hear that now. So I might as well give it all to them. Dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, That's cool. <clears throat> especially like we could release six songs right now and that's a perfect little introductory to marshland ranch ep album um here's what we sound like there's there's like three exciting songs there's like three sad slow dancing songs and that's what we're all about and uh so i don't know if that's what we're gonna do or not but releasing music is like so important to us right now dude it's so important well the good thing is now it's a lot easier to catch music out there yeah. Mm-hmm. Versus the old day. I mean, versus back in the day. I'm so blessed with followers too, dude. Yep. Like I, I forget all the time. There's 240,000 people that follow me on TikTok. That's cool. 
And I tell these guys all the time, I'm like, they would have no problem hearing some original content. Dude. Take advantage of that. Absolutely. While I, while I got it. That's awesome. I follow you on TikTok. Thank you, Vaughn. Mm-hmm. You're one of them. <laughs> Thank you, Vaughn. <Paul. laughs> <laughs> now, do you follow me or does the Dale Not Dale podcast Oh, no, me, me personally. He's got a hidden oh, username. Dale, got a hidden. <laughs> Dale Not Dale follows me, too. I send Dale Not Dale yeah. memes all the time, dude. I hope yeah. you'll get them. That's me. I see some funny <laughs> shit. On <Instagram. laughs> I don't have. I don't have access to. I only have access to our Instagram. I All gave you the. Inf- well, info. you did. I just don't want to look it up because that's one more thing you got to look at. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I see some funny stuff I do, man. Have you ever seen Aldo? I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> my favorite Aldo video right now is he's he's uh he's standing on the side of the road at night and he's got his thumb down like this. Somebody goes, "You need a ride." No, I'm fucking pissed off. I mean, ride my thumb would be like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and uh, he does where he pulls up into the parking lot. He's like, Your Uber's here. And the guy's like, I didn't order an Uber. You know, well, you got one now. He's like, In this like old beat up <laughs> truck. Dude. The lady's like, look no, him up. I'm not getting in your car. And he goes, Wait, I need help finding my dog. Have you seen my dog? <laughs> Just like, he's funny, man. <laughs> His name's Aldo, A-L-D-O. All right, I'll check him out. He's a good guy. All right. So what's the what's the dreams and aspirations for Marshall and Ranch, man? What, what, what should we know? I want to be big. Big time, dude. I want to play the rodeo. I want to be big. NRG, stadiums, big. Big, Huge. but not too big. You know what I mean? Bigger than that. Prince. Massive. Dude, yeah. Really? Pretty big. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why would you stop it? Yeah. That's some crazy shit. So you don't want to just play the hideout. Out. You want to play the big stage. I'm going to go on tour in Europe. Right. I want to be huge. I mean, I do too. You want to be You want to be like huge for a long time? Like you're constantly putting out music for a long like time? Like you too. Dude. They yeah, put out music forever. Huge. I would yeah. if I was like in the music industry, which I won't be because I can't sing and I can't really do anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would, I would want to be one of those like they had their time like that five year stretch <laughs> where they're just throwing out bangers and then they just disappeared gone like the Hanson brothers oh dude mm-hmm. and some, they come back give us some recent some recent five year stretches crossfade I'm sitting here trying to think I don't hold on like recent five year stretches music especially uh it, Luke Bryan <laughs> <laughs> he had a, he had about a ten year span going on, dude. But yeah, he's died out for sure, man. Unfortunately, it's just somebody. Um, Hart, Hardy, Hardy said in an interview that when Chris Stapleton sang with Justin Timberlake on the CMA Awards in 2016, that ended like the bro country era. Yeah, I've seen that that interview. He said that. Yeah, and so I, I think, dude, that's that performance was incredible. I'll never. That's what got me on Chris, dude. I was like, I want to be that guy. I want to sound like that guy. That's the voice I want to have right there. I, I I can't believe I'd never heard of this dude before. He's been in Nashville for like twenty years. Yeah, years. writing. Yeah. yeah, he wrote a bunch of hits. Yeah, he wrote "Drink a Beer" for Luke. Luke Con- I mean, Luke yeah. Bryan. I mean, he's he, he wrote, wrote a, a whole bunch for Taylor Swift too. Adele wrote for Adele, dude. Really? George yeah. George Strait, <clears throat> Josh Turner, I think too. Yeah, I, he wrote "Your Man" by Josh yeah. Turner. You, you heard her singing it last week. Do I? Me and Magnus sang. We opened the show singing "Your Man." He played harmonica to it. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I saw the clip. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. That was awesome, man. Maybe locked him. Yeah. I just think I just keep thinking about Scry McCurry. He kept sing, he kept singing that over and over on Idol uh, when he was out that time. He had the voice for it, dude. <laughs> Scotty, he's had a good career. Voice. Yeah, yeah. No, Scotty's one of the ones that's that's got it for sure. And one of the more recent ones, I can't really think of anybody since him that's been as successful. No, they really haven't had any. He's had a he's he got he got linked up with the right people. That's really what happened. Yeah. This past year, idol. This year's been pretty good. Um, it's been a little different. Uh, yeah, I've been watching. Yeah, I, so there's that little 15 year old girl from Magnolia. Um, she made me really proud, but she got all she got like two nos. Um, and then uh, I texted you earlier. His yeah, you got episode gotta... is actually Aaron tonight. Uh, I did a karaoke contest for uh, this place in Friendswood, and the guy that won it, I walked up to him. I was like, hey, have you ever considered doing any of these shows or anything like that? I was like, it's not like a perfect scenario, 
But it's pretty cool if he can get on TV. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I can text somebody tomorrow. Well, let me get back with you. I text my producer. He's like, yeah, just send him, send him my info. And he like, it's not going to say what happened, but you know, but. Well, I've seen the thing. Good dude played football. Like he, yeah, he was a tight end at University of yeah, Houston. I've seen that. I've seen that's the, pretty cool. I've seen that little thing you, that they posted on ABC or whatever you sent to me. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I was able to do that. Just, you know, like kind of be a scout. Be like, hey, I can, I can connect you with the right people. Yeah. And like good come out of it. That's pretty cool. It's all about connections, man. Yeah, exactly. Just being nice, like like you, dude. Like it's like you've been such a good plug for 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 myself for sure, and and for we did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you dude. Got the <laughs> no, hey, I, I'm always trying players. to help. I want to help people out, and like I said, hey, man, I, I'm always trying to help you guys out for sure, man. That's so awesome. it's You're fun, listen, dude. It's been fun. You want to play some music? Yeah, yeah. I want to hear something. Don't, I like don't we? Don't we have to do a what's your beef? Oh yeah, so I want to know with y'all. Yeah, we're gonna. So we do a segment. You made it, this is a podcast, push, but we do a yeah. segment called "What's Your Beef" from our sponsor, Good Ranchers. So we always like to ask our guests, "What's your beef, man?" So we're gonna we're gonna ask you guys, like with each other, or just no, just no, a, just dude. anything in general, anything. Oh, like individually like or you, as you want know what really ranch. grinds my gears? Like, like yeah, exactly. It's kind of okay. like that. Oh, okay. Kind of like that. As Marshall Ranch or as individuals, dude, whatever you want to do. Okay, it's an open forum. Let's keep it professional, boys. Evan, why don't you go first? I got to think about it, this. It doesn't even really have to be professional. No. Well, yep. I don't want to badmouth any venue. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Because. You don't I, want to burn any bridges, dude. I know who I got beef oh, with. That is bad luck. Yeah, but we just, yeah. Just, that was you. I didn't do it. Huh? Dude, he tucked you in That's last my night. beef right there. Ah. My hat falling. Dude. That's bullshit, dude. Oh, and he did it sideways. Oh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Okay. That's an omen. Mm. I'd say <laughs> I don't want it to be something boring like gas prices. Because <laughs> those suck right now, dude. I don't know. My beef at the moment is <sighs> Szechuan beef. <laughs> So you don't have like a whole lot of you don't have a whole lot of beef. No nah, man, life's pretty good right now. Other than you know, just uh, I'll try to keep it as professional as possible. Freaking pay us, dude. You know? Wait a minute, you you have a pretty hard time with hecklers. Hecklers at shows. At shows, you get hecklers. Oh yeah, people go when they heckle hey, country man. music hey, man. singers. You guys were great, but uh, I just I was on the phone with Kid Rock. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'll totally tell you that. that. Okay, so. Hecklers, this industry comes with a lot of people who swear that they know what they're doing. Yeah. And they just do not. Um, another thing is you sometimes say a lot of cool shit. Like, I spent two weeks in Los Angeles with Lionel Richie, Luke Brown, and Katy Perry. It's a true statement. Right. But it sounds absolutely ridiculous. Right. So it's kind of hard to believe people in this industry, but I've learned to tell when people are bullshit. Um uh, I'm my beef is with people who think that they know what they're doing in this industry and they do not know what they're doing. Um, especially people who walk up to my super talented, uh, or our super talented 15 year old sound guy and tell him how to run sound. Oh, nice. Oh, he yeah. loves that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't do that, dude. Don't piss you off. That's not a don't good piss idea. Off. He is. <laughs> um, mm. Oh, yeah. Also, people telling us that I need to get a new sound guy. I need to get a new band. My band sucks. I just got off the phone with Kid Rock just now. He says your band sucks too. <laughs> Donald Trump actually. It was happened. In a it's funny because it happened. It did happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Donald Trump was in a conference call with Kid Rock. He said you guys are the suckiest band he's ever heard in his life. <laughs> um, somebody, yeah, somebody annoying, physically dude. came up to y'all and oh, said yeah. that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hammer yeah. too, dude. I mean, freaking trash. Yeah, fucking Kid Rock on the phone just now, and he fucking said, "You get a new band, man. You get a fucking new band, man." And it's just like, why? <laughs> who, who are you? Wow, you're short and stubby. <laughs> who are you, dude? And uh, then, like, he wants your phone number and email so he can connect you with Kid Rock. Of course. Uh. Yeah, and we call him, we call him Bob, <laughs> <laughs> but he does, but he doesn't remember it the next day to connect you. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 and then he's like, no, no. I told him I knew. Dude, Kidra. bar bar talk is the worst it's because yeah. oh yeah. Even in my industry, in the only gas industry, I had a young guy work for me 
oh man, I ran into this guy. He told me he can get us all this business and this. I'm like, dude, y'all ran a bar talk of shit. None yeah. of this is gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. And he was just so believing everything. I'm like, dude, it ain't it ain't gonna happen, bro. It's just bar talk. People think that they're they 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 know it all, or they think they got these connections, and mm-hmm. come find out they ain't no shit. Just to make like, like just is it, do you do you do that to make yourself feel better? About I, yeah, I don't know. You do. Some people, yeah. Just, some people just do that. Yeah, that's that's got another, no action though. They got no action behind anything no. they do. That's another beef I have is venues that don't. I think have that's Marshall Ranch beef. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And then getting paid. Yeah, just pay us, dude. You know, it's uh so a really good example is um. This this college station gig that we just did, they paid us great. Pay wasn't the issue. Um, I don't think they were under the the impression of exactly what came with that. Yeah. Um, I think because uh, I, I I told you guys I know the lady who works there. Yeah. yeah. And she loves Trey from the Fade. Trey Lewis from American Idol. I think she was really proud to tell her coworkers and her employees that she booked Trey from the Fade. Right. Um, we gave her a price and she didn't argue with it or anything like that. And she saw what she paid for. It's like, and I don't think she ac- actually understood exactly what she was paying for. It's like, that's not a number we just pull out of our ass, dog. And yeah. That is. That yeah, is so does she think she paid for more of something? No, less. No, we, less. we got there. She, this is a, a wedding venue, like really yeah. nice fancy place, pretty tables, tablecloths, still can throw these, whatever. Okay. They want us to set up in the corner, like over there, like behind those three lights. That's how much space we had. And if you've seen our stage, drum kit takes up that much space alone. Right. So we're usually about 30, 40 feet wide, 20 feet deep. We're five men. I got a man. mega PA, lights, all kind of stuff. They want us to set up inside this low ceiling place. Everybody would hate us. The drummer's head would be it's like, be, everybody have a headache. Right. So I said, this is great, but there's a stage right there. Can we play on that stage? Like, no, I want y'all to play inside. I was like, well, how about right here on this patio? We start this patio. So like, well, we could do, we try the patio. So I have the guys. Start carrying stuff out of the van, and they're still coming, still coming. And then the whole patio, space is the biggest garage, full of gear. Like, where are you going to set up now? So she leaves, and venue staff is like, I guess y'all could use the stage if you want to. So we started setting up on the stage. She came back. She was pissed, screaming. Not a whole lot, but, you know. (laughs) (laughs) And it turns out what she was mad about was she didn't think we'd be loud enough from the stage to where they were holding the award ceremony. The stage is outside, okay. by the way. Yeah. I don't think we mentioned that. Oh, sorry. But uh, <laughs> anyways, I was like, all right, so I just walk over to your amp and just turn it up. And it's a Marshall stack. Yeah. And it's does what it does. And it's loud as hell. And she came out all excited, took a video. It's like, can you, take, can you do some more? Can you do some more? It was, it was great. But yeah, that, that's, that's a problem. Yeah, I'm sure they're just not sure if they're getting. They don't know what they're getting yet. Yeah, yeah. like, dude, we're a rock band. Like, we're not. Nah. we're not playing we're, a little acoustic set. Like, mm-mm. hey, that's what you want. That's a whole different show. We're not perfect either, dude. And I, I don't want to be cocky and just be like, you know, we're just we're super good. That's why we charge so much. It's like our equipment, the work we put in before shows, the rehearsals that we put in before shows. Yeah, that's what you're paying for. The easy part is a three hour little gig that we get to do. That's for the you fun guys. part. That's yeah. the fun mm-hmm. easy part. There's a lot of bullshit that goes into it, dude. But I was watching that documentary the other day. They were talking about football. He's like, dude, you're, the practice, you're, you're getting paid for practice. Yeah, the yeah. game, you just you're, you're you play the game for free. Yep. Exactly. The practice is what you're getting paid for. Yeah. All, the, man. all the, the stuff that people don't see. The non-sexy part, that's what you get paid for. Yeah. We're going to start charging people to come on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. We, we yeah. Tell you, oh, yeah. <laughs> people don't see you're all the work we have to, to do in the background. People. Joe Rogan pays 3,000 people to his guests. He does? Yes. Yeah, so that's it? Yeah. Uh, SNL only pays five thousand. I, I heard that Shane Gillis per, Gillis. per like headline or per and host to host. Yeah, like Shane SNL, Gillis when Shane Gillis did it, you get paid five grand. And that, that's exposure, that's exposure though. Yeah, it's great exposure, it's, but it's more bullshit just for an entire week, just for one yes, hour. Yes, that's on what he said. He goes, "There's a lot of work that went in." Yeah. Oh, I'd do it for half. Yeah, I would too, right? <laughs> I'd, do it. I'd pay. I'd pay twenty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that would be great, man. I'd pay them five grand. That's awesome. What yeah. is what is what is your beef, Evan? Shoot, I don't really know. I don't know if I have beef. 
<laughs> None. I don't know. Are you chicken? Gum that yeah, don't chicken. <laughs> I'm not gum that don't last long. I don't have beef. I'm just chicken. Yeah. I'm I don't just, know. Let me think about it. I've just chilled behind those know. aviators. Yeah. Don't stress <laughs> out, Julian. Just, it's just a question. Let's go with the real light one. My my big beef. Come down to tear down. And people are standing around. Oh, that makes me mad. Yeah. So, oh man. What you mean? Okay, so are you so are you calling out your bandmates right here? Well, <laughs> no. I think he's calling out his lead singer is what he's doing. We've gotten really good. In the beginning, it was rough. I would lose my cool, which doesn't help anybody. You know, you need to be a leader. You don't need to be yelling at anybody. So I've gotten better at it. Now we're working great as a team. But in the beginning, it would be a lot of me doing the grunt work. Like, you have six cables, maybe. Ten. Yeah. Okay. So we have 24 cables that go to a snake that's 150 foot long that has 48 cables come off of it. It goes to a soundboard. It's got 52 more cables. Jesus. And then we have cables going to all our amps. So that's another 10. And there's cables coming with a drum kit. That's another 10. So there's just so stupid. a lot there's of cable. Things. And yeah. everything's heavy. Hmm. Y'all need Larry the Cable Guy. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got Judah the same guy. <laughs> That was good. That was good. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Get her done. <laughs> Get her done. <laughs> Y'all remember the Larry the Cable Guy movies? Uh, I never watched them, but yeah. I bet I started Terminator? I bet I started them. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he, I finished them. He had the, the health inspector. Oh, that was funny, man. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they were funny, but yeah, I mean, he was riding a high for a while, too. Yeah. he had a, That was his five year, yeah. his country five year deal. He did have a nice five year yeah. run, didn't he? <laughs> they talk about that for comedians. Most comedians have a good five year run. Todd Gurley. Only one that's really surpassed that they talked the about running back? Yeah, Kevin Hart true. Kevin Hart really oh, yeah. had the longer yeah. more longevity because he probably slept with Diddy the most <laughs> that's, that's the thing you know Cat Williams called him yeah, up yeah he did he got him <laughs> up <laughs> All right, Diddy's sitting in the, in the room right now, and he's like, I'm going to sleep with somebody from Marshland Ranch. Which one of y'all three? Which one of y'all three is going to be? ready, dude? No. How big I got to be? <laughs> this guy. No. This guy's <laughs> in between us. Dude, one of y'all has nah. to take one for the team if you want to get famous. This guy, which, that's what these guys don't understand. They're single, dude. And it's like, you guys are good-looking single guys, and y'all fucking play guitar. Dude. I was like... Jim over here on the end, he don't have no game, dude. The, the guy down you got there, no Riz? That's my I beef. Is that you got no got, game? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so that awkward. Is my beef right there. You got no game. She'll make eye contact with me across the room like all night long, and then I'll just leave. Yeah. <laughs> you, had, you had some girls looking at you at the shop bar uh, yeah. whenever you were dancing in front of the DJ booth. And uh, I think they were going to walk up to you and ask you your name. And then they stopped real quick and said, That guy. <laughs> Needs to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Come well, on, dude. Hey, you got to work on your game, dog. I know. I got to work on it. You be killing it. It's it's easy for him. He plays guitar. He's in a freaking band. It's easy for Evan. He's yeah. Evan. That's that's just rephrase. Evan dude. gets it. Dude. Evan gets. Evan it. I don't have to say anything. He doesn't. Just, They'll come up to him too. He's just mysterious. Yeah. yeah. Meemaw's like Evan. Really? Meemaw's yeah. love Evan. Mister Steal Your Meemaw. Dude. Yeah. Hey, dude. Yeah. You ever had a Mima come up to you and ask you to dance? No, I danced with her. Yeah. I did. Dance with he her. did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah. He'd make a good grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> come see your people. Boy. Yeah. Oh shoot. Okay. All right, okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's have some fun, man. Let's uh, get some guitars out. Some music. I want to right. hear. I want to hear a little little ditty. Little ditty, little ditty sprinkles. All right, uh, Mr. Vaughn, this is a song called uh, Your Memory Might, and it's a song that I wrote uh, whenever I first learned guitar, and then I brought it to the guys, and then Marshall and Ranch did a little bit. And this is our fun, we love it when the crowd dances to this one, it's a nice dancing song. I swear my heart is getting colder Just like this bed I'm sleeping in The songs I write are getting sadder 
Just like this house I'm living in Since you left me I've been lonely And drinking myself To sleep every night So if this whiskey doesn't kill me my baby, your memory mine I heard you got a new man now That you're doing pretty good He put a diamond on your hand now just like I always thought I would You can't say it doesn't hurt me Watching him treat you right So if this whiskey doesn't kill me my baby your memory of mine cause your memory might be the thing that puts me in the ground But at least I'll die knowing that you're happy now Oh, you're happy now I swear my heart is getting colder Just like this bed I'm sleeping in And the songs I write are getting sadder Just like this house I'm living in since you left me, I've been lonely And drinking myself to sleep every night So if this whiskey doesn't kill me My baby, your memory of mine you wanna uh you wanna play him a faster one? Don't sound funky. Don't sound funky. Uh-huh. Right, I can't get into it. Uh try my best though. What's this? I don't know if we can do this. <laughs> you do, I'm your man. Nah, that's uh, not gonna work. <laughs> Game will work. You do I'm your man. Let me get a sip of whiskey. I wrote this song, and uh, but like I said, these guys just this is the one where I was taking the shit, and I came up with the lyrics. But again, I mean this this song wasn't made complete until I showed it to these guys and they fixed it up. I'm not the guy that you think I am. And I want to love you I don't know if I can So let me spill it out In a way you understand If you want a broken heart I'm your man And 
And some of these other guys want to give you their time. They want to buy you nice things, and baby, that's fine. But if you want to stay up all night and wonder where I am, let me tell you, baby, I'm your man. Well, don't blame yourself, girl. I've always been this way. The best thing that I can do is get on my knees and pray. Oh, and ask the good Lord to forgive me of my sins. Wake up the next morning and do the same old shit again. Yeah. Cause I'm not the guy that you think I am. And I won't love you, I don't know if I can. Yeah. I hope I spelled it out in a way you understand. If you want a broken heart, I'm your man. Yeah. Yeah. So you heard a little tunes from our boys at Marshland Ranch, dude. Y'all are incredible. Thank you. That was really fun. It was. It was extremely good. That was a good time. I always do the hair on my time. neck and face was on like first we started the first song. What was that one again? Uh your memory might. Yeah. You yeah. did play that one at the house. Yeah. I remember that I was like, dude, that's some great like thank you just you. played by yourself with the guitar yeah, before you. trey you know your 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 foot taps whenever you sing yeah they're real it's, anticlimactic oh yeah it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> that's my rhythm baby yeah. Dude, I, i'm yeah. I, i'm sitting here like doing leg kicks yeah and you're yeah. just it's it's my rhythm that's how i know when to go uh, yeah that's how i know when to go baby well it was, it was amazing that's my drum so, hey it's my drum down there I, I like that that's me that's me on stage though too that foot I was always moving forward. Like, yeah, what about the time you did karate? What about the time you did air thrust? Huh? You were going, you were going, going like this, oh, House yeah. Blues? Yeah. I saw that video. Oh, yeah. yeah. I move, dude, when I can. <laughs> I believe it. Especially when I get into it. I just can't move too much because I get out of breath. <laughs> 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 it's hard to sing out of breath, dude. It's hard. I bet. <laughs> it's hard to sing we can sing, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't know what it's like to not sing, dude. Sorry. That was fun, man, dude. You guys were awesome. So yeah, thank y'all for, for sure. playing for us. Thank you all for having us. We're yeah, definitely gonna uh I'm, I can't wait to put this stuff out, dude. That's that's so too cool. So where can everybody find you guys at? So where we can uh find your socials and all the other send us off, Jim. Shameless plug, Marshland Ranch on Facebook, Marshland Ranch on Instagram. At right. Marshland Ranch. M A R S H L A N D. R A N C H, Marshall Ranch. Marshall Ranch. Okay, so keep an eye. If you guys get a chance to listen to them, check them out. Make sure you go uh, make go follow them for sure, just so you can keep up to date with what y'all doing. And also, you're you're on your personal. You share a lot. Of, I mean, you share the same stuff too. Yeah, I got yeah. enough followers on there to. Y'all don't have to follow me on there. Y'all can just follow Marshall Ranch. Follow Marshall Ranch. Yeah. Get their get their numbers up. Yeah, please. So, uh, but yeah, man, I hope I can't wait till y'all play the rustic. Yeah, that's gonna be on. cool. That's going to be a fun. Awesome. fun. I want to go. Oh, we're going. <laughs> Come on. Play harmonica for us. We're going to get rowdy, dude. Is it during the week? Okay. I'm not, I don't I don't do good of a week shows. If it's, if it's during the week, though, we'll do exactly what the Rustic wants us to do. Yeah, it's at the, I mean, it'd be at their mercy for them. I guess I don't know how they book, but yeah. regardless. I, wanna, will, I would love to go to a show. We will be in there. Come on. And we're going to heckle. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it. I just talked to Kid Rock. Yeah. <laughs> this is the real Limp Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, but uh, hey, man, thank y'all for coming in. This has been awesome. I'm glad to uh, get you back in here with the, with the boys. Yeah, dude. Shout out, shout out Judah the sound man. Judah the sound man, yeah. Shout out Mike the drummer, or not Mike the drummer. Mike, Mike the bassist. Mike, Mike the bassist. He's slapping the bass. Shout out Luke yeah. Watson, the shout out Luke Watson, the drummer. Shout out Good Ranchers. Good Rancher, dude. Hell shout yeah. Out, shout out uh, Green Apple Crown. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, dude. Shout out Miller Lite. Hell yeah. Any other shout outs you want to give out? Hammies, bell bottoms. Which Boy kind? Boy. Hammies. Hammies, bell bottoms. Are y'all both wearing hammies? Correct. Yeah. It's the only one you wear. Exactly. Correct. Their butt Sponsors. looks good in them. That's why they're called hammies. <laughs> uh huh. I'll tell you what, you boys look good. Thank Shout you, out you DXL, did. the fat boy store. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, was a, that was a story. That was a trip. DXL. <laughs> yeah, these boys took me to the fat boy store to get me fitted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's a mark for everybody. Yeah, yeah right. And they look good, too. Mm-hmm. Good, man. Well, uh, y'all got a website up yet or no? No working website. On <clears throat> okay. No work in progress. A lot of potential. Well, good. Well, uh, yeah, man. Thank y'all for coming in again. This was awesome. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Glad we hear some uh, live music. It's the first time ever on the D&D pod that we had live, live music. Amazing. Wow. Amen. Bro. Well, why not be Trey from the Fay and the boys from Marshall Ranch, Absolutely. you know? You guys killed it. So. Absolutely. Thank y'all, guys. We'll go. Awesome. Thank y'all. Later. Thank y'all. Right. New feet, good ranches meet. Bring them good eats. We stay swangin', no words, never bland. Podcast kings on the mic, yeah, we grand. From the heart and the soul, our stories unfold. Raw and real, yeah, our tales is gold. Cause we tipping on four bowls, wrapped in four bowls. Podcast too ill, Magnus take off his clothes. Good ranchers be always bringing the feast. Uncle Dale Bomb, Magnus, we on the beat. Cause we tipping on four bowls, wrapped in four bowls. Podcast too ill, Magnus take off his clothes. Good ranchers be always bringing the feast. Uncle Dale Bomb, Magnus, we on the beat.